Hello. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Midweek Video. Okay, we're looking right here on this, right there. That, yeah, sorry. That, on that camera right there, that's how we're looking at everybody. Yep. Because if we look over here, it looks like we're looking away from everybody. I'm looking at myself right now. Right. Hi. And they know that because they can see that your eyes are not aimed at the camera. Yep, I'm looking at me. Right. So if we talk right here, then we're talking to them. So, mm -hmm. hey, everybody. Welcome to the Midweek Video. Mm -hmm. Um... Like we said before, down in the uh, description box below is a link for our PayPal to support and uh, help out the channel so that we can move forward. First order of business, we got to give you guys an update. Uh, we found out that her papa, uh, Gina's dad, uh, he does have cancer. And he's going to start chemo next week. So if we can get all your guys's uh, prayers and your positive thoughts and just whatever you do, just really good, really good juju, whatever you guys want to call it. We would really, really appreciate that because he's getting ready to do probably one of the hardest things he's done in his life. And so we're all rooting for him and we're all here for him. So we love you, Wayne. If you happen to watch this video, say I love you, Grandpa. Love so you, love Grandpa. You. Or Papa. Papa. <laughs> All right, let's get to the rest of this video starting right now. on Sunday. About to leave out. Here's the trailer. Here's a Mazda. Everybody keeps asking me about what about the Mazda? What about the Mazda? <laughs> it's sitting here, waiting, resting. It's kind of getting to me. I really actually need to get out here, give that a good sanding, and throw some primer on it at least to help stop that shit from happening. There's a whole lot of rust happening back here. Look, and she's still just a getting it. Look at her, Oh, <laughs> There's that chrome grill everybody wants. There's that chrome front bumper everybody wants. Them chrome mirrors. I do have the chrome handles at the house. them rims they come off a of Toyota look at them uh, chrome uh, tail lights chrome handle antique tags it's still registered got me a drop em sticker a mini trucking sticker I need to put a freak support sticker on there yes indeed it's still here damn tires starting to get low or it's just sinking. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about reverse four links and four links in general, pretty much, and how we're going to be able to put them together using a few simple tools that I kind of threw together so that we can see how a suspension works. Uh, these are adjustable to within about two inches on each hole there. And then the same thing on this. This is adjustable to within two or three inches. This would be your the center of your axle, and this is your pinion. So I'm going to use this as the handle, and then these would be your link bars. Are you lipping the words that I'm saying? Papa, let's see. I'm always just, just, just. Pick a pick a pick, pick, pick. TikTok. Yeah, she's like TikToking. Okay. So this is what we're going to do, and I'm going to turn the camera around, and we're going to look at it from a whole nother angle. That time it was. <laughs> All right. What we got here, say this is the back of the cab of the truck. Okay, this is the back, and here's your frame. This comes out to the back. Generally, You've got a, from, from the back, you've got your drive shaft that comes out. It connects to your pinion angle. I mean, to your pinion, which is connected to your differential, which is connected to your axle. Your axle comes out like that. And then your wheels are out here. Generally a four link, you'll build a cross member from here up and over. That's what that would be right there. And then you would do your your link bars from here to here and here to here. 
it's the same general thing. You're really just going to be flipping it around and doing it from this side. Now, most people, they'll end up putting their cross member just about two foot behind. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? There's nothing wrong with going two foot behind and doing that. This, you have to have a really short stroke on that, okay? Let's say you have your wheel here, you have your wheel here, and then you've got your C-notch goes right there, and then your axle back, and then this is where the cab is, right? That way we know where, where we are. Generally, if you go like to here, then you have a bar that goes this long. Now, if you take it that long and you go and you drop it down, it's right there. You lift it up, it's going to end up being close to right there. And so that's what this is right here. This is your range of motion. And that's how when you lift it up, if you're centered when you're laid down. All the way lift, it's going to be centered again. But in the center, it's going to be further towards the front. So if you like to ride barely off the ground, this is where you're going to be unless you set it to center halfway up. Set it to center halfway up and you're going to be further back in your wheel well. Okay, because say this is your wheel well right here. Centered of your wheel well is right here. You drop it down, the center of your wheel is going to be over here, and your wheel is going to tuck like that. Now, that's with a reverse four-link. With the other way around, with a regular four-link, it does the opposite. So then your center of your rim ends up over here. You see what I'm saying? Where you set this and where you lay out is how that's going to work. And with these short bars, you have a harder curve going up and down. I hope all this makes sense to you guys. Um, if we do it like this, and then here's your truck, here's your C-notch, and you put the bars back, you put your, uh, your cross member back here at the very back of the truck. That's what I'm going to do. And let's say you go right to there to center. Your bars are this long. Okay, let's just go ahead and use one of these props. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to turn this and leave that, this hole right, right on top of this dot. Okay, and that's right at the tip there. We make this exact and you're looking at very little movement. The range of motion is very slight. It's not as hard as a shorter bar. This is why I want to go with a longer bar. Because then from ride height to dropped to lifted, there's very little movement front to back. And there's gonna and, and then I'll be able to set that set set the wheel pretty much centered. And through its whole range of motion, it's going to be almost centered the whole way with a longer bar. With the longer bar uh, and the farther forward you get, you're not going to get as much lift. You know, it's kind of like if you put your bag on the, on the axle, you get basically as much lift as the bag can do. Where I'm going to put it is right here at the back of the C-notch. I'm going to put a bag mount there. And then the bag will end up being right behind the frame. And then the bar goes under the axle and mounts under the axle like that. So let's center of the axle into the link bar bag. And it's underneath it like that. So when the bag pushes down, it pushes the axle down, which in turn pushes the whole truck up. And that's basically how that's going to work. That works just like anything else that applies pressure and pushes in the opposite direction. So now let's talk about how it's going to look. What I'd like to do, I need to make some more measurements. But generally, you might have somebody will put a centerpiece here. 
and a bar going back. And then they split it like this and it mounts like that. And that's on top. On top is here and then it goes back and splits. And what this does is having that on center allows the axle to move like this, okay? But then you have a bar here and it goes straight back to here. And then you'll put your bag somewhere in this area. The further back you go, the harder the bag is gonna work to push forward. F closer to the axle you get, the easier it's going to lift and you're not gonna have as much lift. Not having as much lift is a very important thing as well. Let's turn this around and let's talk about your drive shaft, okay? You have your engine right here. You have your transmission right here. Your drive shaft goes right here and it goes back to your axle, okay? The thing is, is with a reverse four link, this is what happens. When this suspension moves, it's moving like this, right? We already know that. The further this way it gets, the longer your drive shaft's gonna have to be. Well, it doesn't get longer because drive shafts don't stretch. So the further it goes, let's say this is your drive shaft pinching. This is your transmission. This is your drive shaft. Your drive shaft normally goes like this. Well, with a reverse four link, it's pulling it this way and this way like this. Okay, you see how that works? You all know what that does, right? What happens if you come out too far? Yeah, you break something, right? <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. You get too much lift with a reverse four link and it's gonna pull it all the way out of the drive shaft, all the way out of the transmission and your drive shaft's gonna drop to the ground and then it's gonna go and it's gonna fly out over there. <laughs> it's gonna be gone. Okay, so you don't wanna do that because then you're stuck on the side of the road without a drive shaft, and generally it's gonna pop out and it's gonna keep spinning. So then it's gonna start doing this. And everything that's in the rear end back here, it's just gonna, like that, it's gonna hit the underside of your truck and it's gonna ruin a lot more than just possibly just falling out. So this is why you can't have too much lift even if we have longer bars. Yes, longer bars allows you to give it a little bit more lift without that drive shaft coming out. And that's important as well. So the shorter the bars, less the lift, longer the bars, more the lift, because you're not gonna be pulling that out and then not being able to go back in. <laughs> so there we go. So now we've got the way this looks. Here's the very back. I wanna put a cross member right here, of course. Big old fat cross <laughs> member. Yeah, and then of course I want to put some gussets right here and a gusset right here. Now what I'll do is I'm going to end up putting center mounts here and here for the lower bars. The lower bars are going to go, I'm going to try to get them all the way out to here. Now, the weird part about that, yes, is that it's going to go, I'm, I'm going to try to go under the frame like this and like that. And then I want to put the bags right here. Now, I, like I said, I haven't made any measurements yet, so don't hold me to this. Some of you are probably saying that's not going to work, Lawrence, it's not going to work. Uh, right here is where the C-notch starts and ends, kind of like that. So that's why I'm trying to get it right at the C-notch. And then I'll mount the bags like that and like that. Then on top, I like to mount this here, out straight out over that and right, right alongside of the bag is where I want to put the top bars. Looks like a lot of commotion to me. 
It is a lot of commotion. <laughs> to a lot of people, it's going to look like a lot of commotion. <laughs> no, excuse me. So now that's what that does is you've got your axle. You've got your top mount. You've got your bottom mount. This is this is the side view. Here's your pinion. Here's your drive shaft. This is where you mount your bottom bars. This is where you mount your top bars. So you've got the bars coming out towards the rear, like so. But they're actually going to be a little closer because we're going to have our rear piece there. So this is where it gets interesting because we're going to try to get them as close as possible. I'm not sure how far below the cross member I'll be able to go. I need to make some measurements so that when you drop the rear, you're not going to drag this part right here on the ground because it's, it can't go, it can't dip down further than the roll pan. The roll pan is pretty much going to be end up sitting on the ground. And then the top one, this is even with the top of the frame. So you can't really go any higher because the bed is up here on top. So we're going to have a mount here, right? Centered. I want to break this. I did break it. Okay. <laughs> this will go up to the top bar. And then from here, this will be down here for the bottom bar. Okay. Now we got to also play with, okay, do we need, because now we have to see how this is going to react with the way this moves. So that's where you can mount this forward. You can mount this back. Depending on where you want to attach it, these can be longer. Like that. And pretty much wherever you want to, okay? These tab mounts could go anywhere. And all these different positions is what's going to change the trajectory of your pinion while it's moving, okay? That's where we start coming into this model that I made. See, we've got one, two, three here, one, two, three there. These all represent that that I just showed you and how this is going to be able to articulate. Then we've got these. These are our bars. All the way out here to the end and to here, this is four foot. All the way in is roughly three foot. And I've got that done on both of these. Then we've got our rear cross member. Okay. This is considered the cross member. And oop, I got it upside down. This is the frame. The black part is the frame. And then these are just where it mounts onto it. Okay. So this would be centered with the frame. And then this is below. Now we can't go all the way this far because that would actually end up being the way I've got it figured out is every quarter of an inch is three inches. So two holes would be three inches. I think this bottom fourth hole would be almost six inches below. And I think six inches is going to be too far down below where your bed is. Cause see, this is where the bed is. Let's see if we make this like that. That's that's the back of your bed right there. This is your lights. Are those S10 lights? I think they're S10 lights. <laughs> I just made an S10. You see, it's even got the body line right there at the bottom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So that's what that is this model is for. So now we can actually flip this back around and we can play with the model. The model is set up so that we can change how everything works. Let's go with the way that's set up there. Let's go ahead and set this up here. Let's go with a just straight on top and straight on bottom of the uh, axle. And we're going to go all the way out to four foot. Can I zoom in? No. Okay. <laughs> no, because we need to be able to see pretty much the whole thing. Okay. Do we want to zoom in? I hope I'm not boring you guys. Because this is going to get boring. 
Yeah, because you can't really see what you're removing. Unless you just really love this stuff. I love this stuff. So that's why I love playing with toys. He has Hot Wheels he plays with. He lowers them. Why are you telling everybody this stuff? Because it's cool. Okay. Now, this is just straight. Okay? Now, mind you, if, if, if we want to, let's make a mark right here. This is the rear of the frame right there. And then this is pretty much centered. So your C notch would kind of be like this. The C notch usually goes down a little bit further in the front. I'm sorry, this is taking forever. I didn't realize that we we're going to be doing all this. This is who's falling asleep in the class. Wake up. Okay. I am. <laughs> this is pretty much how it's going to look right there like that. Okay. This is the center of your, of, of your axle. So your wheel is right here. I don't have anything to simulate the wheel. Okay. Now we got this. See how this moves. This would be laid out and this would be with lift. Now see how that pinion is staying pretty much where it is. That's because it's all, because both bars are parallel with each other. So that's why it's going to keep it like that. That's pretty much what you're going to want to do. You're pretty much going to want your top bars almost exactly as long as your bottom bars. Because then it does that. Now, when you're laid out, yes, your pinion is still straight. So now you have a little bit harder of an angle going down for your drive shaft. And then over here, you're going to have this go up to where your drive shaft connects. So that's good. This is what you're looking for. His Almost drawing, exactly. Sorry. Huh? I was going to say you're drawing so big it goes off the paper. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it does. not all the way. See, look, we can, we can go smash right through that, right through the frame. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I shouldn't do that. Anyway, so that's how long the four foot is. What the hell is this? Oh, my God. She's got a onesie. What's wrong with my onesie? There is nothing wrong with that onesie. You are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> okay, after that cute onesie. As <laughs> to the cute onesie. Okay. So this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to make them as parallel as possible at the top and the bottom. That doesn't mean you can't do all kinds of weird stuff with where you put your link bars and everything, as long as they're the same at the top as they are at the bottom. So the same distance. Okay. They have to be the same distance apart. If you, if you change any of this, let's just go back one notch which is equivalent to three inches and like up two inches what the hell happens I can't even get it in the hole there we go we changed it by three inches that's it that's all we did now it just does this that's all it does it doesn't work I mean, we can change this all over the place. We can make one shorter, one longer. Uh, if you make them even shorter, that's probably something you guys are going to want to see, right? So let's, let's do that. Let's make some three inch parallel bars. And then you guys can see how much the difference is. This is very time consuming. I didn't expect this to have to, I didn't expect this to take this long to move everything around. Almost there. I just accidentally there. <laughs> she needs me. All right. So now we're set up centered, right? And now it's going to move to there and all the way to there. Let's make a mark. We're right about there, right? This is with short bars. And then you come all the way up and you're at center. Okay. That works. 
Okay, you're laid out. You're at center. You go to here, and now you're over here. So this is your arc with your short bars. Okay, let's go back to the long bars where we were to begin with. And I'll show you the difference because this is almost a scale. So there, now we're at center, just like it was. Well, that's not centered. This is centered, okay? Centered, it's actually right there. Now we're going to go up. Now we're laid out. We're still centered. Let's put the set it back up again. And let's go full lift, which roughly about right there. Let's go ahead and make our mark. This is your arc. I mean, literally. Your full range of motion is straight up and down. That's the number one reason for longer bars. Because then you, you're not moving very much from front to back. So that's it. That's what we're trying to get to. That's, that's what we're trying to figure out. Now, when I figure out, remember we were talking about this. This is the ending of the video now. This, I'm, there's not much more that I'm going to talk about. From here to here, that looks like a really long bar, right? It's actually not. It's basically from here to here. It's just positioned differently. The one thing that this is going to do is it is going to articulate a little bit different. It's going to very slightly pull the axle back at full lift and slightly back at full uh, laid out I'll, I, at, at all the way down. So that's the only thing that it's probably going to do a little bit on that. So that's going to roll the axle just a hair. And then these straight bars are not going to do much. They're going to be pulling at the top. So the axle will roll just a hair. But that's about it. But that's also because we're using really long bars. In, the, in it. If it was here and you were doing that, it would have a little bit harder of a pull and push. If you were going from halfway and then trying to do these bars like that. So like I said, I got to make some measurements and that's what's going on with, with the way this, this, this suspension is going to work. Hope I really didn't bother you guys too much with the uh, explanation of this. I, I, I really didn't plan all this out in my head. I, I mean, I know what I got to do but I didn't have this written down or planned or anything like that. So I'm sorry for the long explanations. I'm sorry if I went back and over things six or seven times. And, uh, but we are here at the end of the video. Thank you for making it this far. If you've watched the entire thing and you haven't already gotten drunk or high or, you know, just <laughs> sitting around <laughs> falling asleep, you're over there. Oh shit. I got to watch it again. So thank you again. Uh, subscribe at the bottom, comment, uh, give me your thoughts. If I missed anything, please help these other guys out by doing an explanation of what you may or may think that I did wrong or what you believe, you know, would be beneficial and help. Or if you just think this won't work at all and I'm just a really big idiot, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Miss the support group over here. Huh. See y'all later.